Welcome to Agent Noob everyone, and let's go through all the details of the upcoming March patch that is set to release sometime today. There's a lot of good stuff this month, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's begin with the general changes. Wonders after many painful posts complaining about how easy they were to build and defend in team games get a sizable nerf by doubling their cost from 3000 to 6000. The Mongols specifically who had their wonder at 4000 resources get nerfed even harder up to 8000 resources. It's safe to say that this should definitely delay the timings of the wonders in team games, but since slinging resources amongst allies is still a thing, we'll have to wait and see if they need some sort of scaling on resources or time depending on the size of the map. That said, since the developers acknowledge that this nerf disproportionately affects 1v1s in particular as a stalemate breaker, they mentioned that they will be working on some sort of scaling to make wonders viable but not overpowered, regardless of map size or player count, so we'll have to wait and see. Another very welcome change is the significant nerf of the stone wall building time. Many of us were complaining about how easy it was to wall up to slow down enemy progression and keep rewalling to buy yourself even more time. Well, the build time is now doubled from 8 seconds to 16, which is great. The Delhi specifically also get a nerf in this regard, in which their special infantry stone building time is also doubled from 30 seconds to a whopping 60, which is also a good change. They've also addressed two more things. Attack animations overall were fixed with the exception of the elephants in previous patches, but this patch should address that final flaw now. No more animation cancelling of any kind. They also fix the crash when observing at 8 speed, so that's also nice for casters as well. And finally, Boulder Bay, Confluence, and Black Forest were all removed from the 1v1 matchmaking pool. Keep in mind that you can still use these maps in custom lobbies today, and they might come back to the pool after the spring update as well. They've mentioned that they're also working on map balancing across the board, which is great to hear as the game lacks in that department quite severely. Alright, now that we've covered the general changes, let's take a look at Civ specific changes, starting with the Chinese. I didn't know this existed, but apparently the nest of bees would stop firing once the initial target died. Thankfully, this is fixed, so your nest of bees shouldn't randomly stop anymore. More importantly, however, we're seeing some changes to the Chinese taxing system overall, as the Chinese win rate absolutely plummeted after the heavy nerfs from the previous patch. The tax cooldown of buildings is increased by 5 seconds, up from 15 to 20. There was also a bug that allowed the capital town center to receive taxes after being destroyed, but this is fixed as well. More importantly, the supervised bonus was brought down to 150% in the previous patch by mistake, so this patch will revert it back to the previous 200%. They do mention that they plan on adjusting this number once more, but alongside other buffs to the Chinese to offset the 50% drop, so we'll have to wait and see. The real buff from all of this is the carry capacity increasing from 20 to 40 gold. This means that you can increase the carry capacity to 80 gold through Imperial examinations now, and the Imperial Academy will now act as a tax drop-off point. These changes aren't enough for the Chinese to bounce back in my opinion, but there are some more updates that I will cover later in the video regarding this as it relates to future patches. Moving on to the Delhi Sultanate, as mentioned before, their infantry stone building was nerfed to 60 seconds. That said, they do get an additional 50 wood nerf to their starting wood as well, down from 250 to 200. Furthermore, Sanctity Bonus Gold was also reduced from 100% to 50% as well. The meme of nerfing the Delhi no longer applies of course after the recent changes, so I believe these tweaks are a step in the right direction to balance the Delhi closer to the average. The Mongols also have some changes. Apart from the previously mentioned additional wonder nerf, the Uvu stone generation is reworked to scale with each age. Instead of the flat 105 stone per minute, the Uvu will now provide 80, 100, 120, and 150 stone per minute for the Dark, Feudal, Castle, and Imperial Age respectively. I think this is a great change to nerf the early game of the Mongols, but buff their late game as well. It's not all rainbows though, as the Castle Age Khan's damage is reduced from 12 to 8, which is pretty significant, and the Yam Network movement speed buff duration is reduced by half, down to 10 seconds. Hence, maintaining a Yam Network on a larger part of the map will be required moving from one zone to the other from now on. Towards the end of the patch notes, the developers added a What's Next section. The Abbasid Dynasty will be receiving some changes especially to their Camels and their House of Wisdom. While we don't have many details, Camels will most likely be buffed but not to the point of making them the bulk of the army apparently. The House of Wisdom will also see adjustments in not only technology costs but also when they show up in which age. Even though it doesn't mention in the patch notes, I tuned in to the developer discussion stream on Twitch yesterday and Eric Robel mentioned that 25% infantry bonus tech will be moved up and some Camel technologies moved out to later stages. Again, we don't have many details, but this should buff the early game of the Abbasids considerably, as the developers want wings to be situationally viable depending on the game. As mentioned in the Chinese section, the developers will further buff the Chinese to make the Civ a lot more fluid in two ways. One, the buildings and units will be available once you unlock the dynasty forever. For example, your access to building Chinese villages won't be taken away from you once you move on to another dynasty and so on. 
Furthermore, the dynasty buildings are moved up one age for you to have access to them earlier, though I'm not entirely sure what this means for the Dark Age and the Imperial Age and how the mechanics will work for that. We'll have to wait and see for them to provide us details in the next month. And finally, the patch notes are very vague about the Holy Roman Empire's landmark changes, but Eric in the stream mentioned that the Reckness Cathedral will be nerfed, as its relic count will be reduced to 2 instead of 3, and the Burgrave Palace will be buffed, in which the train 5 at a time mechanic will be removed and replaced with 5 times the speed for both training and research. This means two things. One, instead of being forced to have the resources of five units at a time to train them, you can queue these units individually for better efficiency and flexibility in which unit you want to train. So instead of requiring 500 food and 100 gold to train a batch of five men at arms at a given time, you can individually train those five units at five times the speed one by one, and even train three men at arms and two spears if need be. Perhaps a more important aspect of this is to buff to the research times. Imagine researching heavy maces and two-handed weapons in just under 30 seconds, instead of taking the full two minutes, not to mention upgrading your mana times quickly as well. This power spike could prove very useful for the Holy Roman Empire for them to be aggressive and push an advantage instead of going for the more long-term eco approach of the Regnus Cathedral. Well, that should cover everything you need to know about the March patch that will likely be released today. I am almost done working on another video regarding eco upgrades, so if you don't want to miss out on that or any other future Age of Empires content, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Once again, I think these changes are in the right direction overall, as the developers are slowly but surely patching the game towards a better balance. There are still lots of work to be done, and we'll cover them of course as they come. As always, thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to factor in the doubled wonder costs, and see you all in the next one.